So hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our video on uh, this asset allocation problem using our the concept that we've discussed so far in this module on investment decisions using expected utility. So as we uh, mentioned in the past lectures, we've said that uh, there are some instances wherein it is reasonable for a consumer to consider um, putting some degree of wealth into a risky investment, that is having an alpha, which is uh, positive. And that occurs when the expected uh, return from that investment exceeds that of the risk-free rate. So we're gonna try and sort of delve into that, to that realm further with this particular example. So suppose an individual's utility defined over end of period wealth W, so the consumer has a wealth W, is given by the utility function, which is this one here, where alpha is some quantity that is greater than one. Now, the individual's current wealth level, which is available for investment, is equal to W uh, naught, right? So that's W naught. So we're uh, tasked to do three things. So the first thing is to find the measures of absolute and relative risk aversion. The second one is to show that an individual's wealth level increases, uh, that the absolute risk aversion measure, which we discussed before, decreases, but the relative risk aversion measure remains unchanged. And we're left with this um, third scenario, uh, third sort of item, and it's a scenario that involves a bullish and a bearish stock market. So that's gonna be interesting. So let's solve one and two first before we get to three. So um, if we go to number one, number one just tells us, okay, we're gonna find the measures of absolute risk aversion and relative risk aversion. So let's start with the absolute risk aversion measure. So that's AW. AW is simply equal to the negative of u double prime w over u prime w. So the second order derivative divided by the first order derivative. And if you recall, right, the utility function we were given with here is uh, u is equal to w one minus alpha over one minus alpha. And we have alpha greater than one, right, as a condition. So if we're gonna take the first order derivative, the first order derivative of this with respect to uh, with respect to W is just gonna be a simple uh, quotient rule. So we have here a derivative of the one on top, that's one minus alpha times W raised to one minus alpha minus one. So that's negative alpha times one minus alpha minus um, uh, the derivative of the one at the bottom is zero times W raised to one minus alpha over uh, one minus alpha squared. So this one cancels out. We're gonna be left with one minus alpha, W negative alpha, one minus alpha over one minus alpha squared. We can cancel that out and we're gonna be left with W raised to negative alpha, right? Then if we're gonna divide that um, by uh, the top, okay? So the top is the second order derivative Right, uh, and that's just essentially the derivative of uh, this one with respect to W again. That's the derivative of this one with respect to W again. And we're gonna be left with negative alpha W negative alpha minus one. That's the second order derivative. So we can find the arrow Pratt absolute risk aversion measure quite simply dividing these two. So A W is equal to negative alpha w negative alpha minus one over w negative alpha. And uh, th this will be some negative quantity by the formula that we have there. So we're gonna be left with uh, alpha w negative alpha minus one over w negative alpha. Well, we can simplify this and we're gonna be left with alpha over w. And that is our RO Pratt uh, absolute risk aversion measure, right? So that's this one. This is AW. Okay, let's box that answer there. The next one will be um, our uh, our relative risk aversion measure, which is just as we mentioned before, right? Um, uh, 
RW, right? RW is just equal to AW times W, right? So RW is just equal to the arrow breadth measure, which is alpha over W times W, which is equal to alpha. Our RW is just equal to alpha. So that's our absolute and our relative risk aversion measure. And that solves number one, right? So that's essentially all that we have for number one. So we can check that out. Next number says um, we need to show that the individual's wealth uh, level in as that as an individual's wealth level increases, his degree of absolute risk aversion will decrease. So we can do that by taking the derivative of the absolute risk aversion measure with respect to W. And we can do the second part of the question, which is leaving his degree of risk, relative risk aversion unchanged by also taking the derivative, but of the relative risk aversion measure. So let's do that now, okay? Number two is just simply this, number two. So to show that um, the wealth level decreases, so we take D A W over D W, right? So we're gonna take essentially the derivative of this one, alpha over W with respect to W, right? And this one will just be equal to, um, so if you do that, that's just a quotient rule. So that's zero times W minus one times alpha over w squared this one is zero we're going to be left with negative alpha over w squared right and we know that that is less than zero for all w greater than zero right and since alpha is greater than one the the same conclusion still applies so this implies that the individuals the individuals degree of absolute risk aversion, absolute risk aversion decreases, decreases because the derivative is negative as his wealth increases, as his wealth increases, right? So we have that there. Next one, okay, we want to show that the relative risk aversion is unchanged. So that's drw dw, which is just the derivative of alpha with respect to w, and that derivative, there is no w there in alpha, so that's zero, right? Which is uh, zero for all w greater than zero. So this means that the, the, the individuals, individuals degree of a relative risk aversion D uh, remains constant, right? Remains constant as wealth increases, right? So we were able to show those two phenomena clearly with just the arrow Pratt uh, conditions that we stated increases. Okay, so next one. Okay, so uh, we have now a question which is a bit more complicated, I guess. So uh, we're done with two. The third one is suppose that a risk-free asset whose return during the investment period is 5% exists. Uh, so say that that risk-free asset exists and the return is 5%. But at the same time, there's also a portfolio of publicly traded common stocks for which um, there's a 40% chance that if the market is a bullish market, right? the return is likely going to be 40%, right? And if it's a bearish market, the return would likely be negative 20%, right? And the probability of it being a bearish or bullish market is generally half. So one half, one half, right? And we're asked, um, find the optimal proportion of an investor's current wealth that should be invested in the portfolio of, of risky assets. Essentially, we're asking how much should the uh, how much should be sort of um, doled out, right? How much should be doled out by the investor, right? If okay, if um, uh, he or she should invest in uh, the risky asset, what percentage of his or her wealth should be invested in that? Okay, assuming that alpha, our level of alpha is equal to three. Okay, so 
let's sort of solve this one. Okay, so let's take this one a bit slowly, right? Um, we've, uh, so for three, right? So we have alpha equal to three as a given. And we also have, if that's the case, then our utility function is just gonna be, um, uh, we have a utility function that's gonna look something like uh, this. So remember we have um, W, right? W raised to one, okay? Um, it, it's gonna be one minus a three, that's W minus alpha over uh, one minus three, right? So we're gonna be left with W raised to negative two over uh, negative two, right? And this is the same as just being um, one over negative two W squared, that's the same, or, right? This is negative one half, so this is negative 0 0.5 over W squared. And so that's another way for us to write the uh, utility function, at least in this respect. So the PDF, okay, the PDF of the return, of the return on the risky asset, which is R tilde, is just, you know, you, just, you have two states. State one is state S. So one is the bullish market, two is the bearish market. Okay, you want a bullish market over a bearish market, of course, it gives you a higher return. So the probability for that, again, is 0.5 for both cases. And the return, the rate of return, R tilde, uh, is 40% in, in a bullish market and negative 20% in a bearish market, right? And as we discussed before, right, the PDF of the investors final wealth, final wealth after investment is just given by this formula. So remember, because we're investing, uh, the wealth is now an uncertain prospect because the return of the stock market is an uncertain prospect. So we have, if you remember the formula, that's W tilde, that's equal to W naught times one plus whatever was allocated in the risk-free asset plus A, A times uh, whatever was allocated in the, which A, which is whatever was allocated in the risky assets, which is R tilde minus RF, right? And this is just gonna be, right? this entire thing is just gonna be, uh, so you, again, you have two states, okay, states, one, two, again, with equal probability of happening, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, then you have a value of W tilde, right? So this is just gonna be, um, W1 is gonna be equal to, so remember you have a 5% sure return, right? Based on the problem. So you have 1.05 W naught plus, it, uh, if it's a bullish market, that's a 40% return. So the, this R there, R tilde is gonna be 40% minus the risk-free rate, which is 5%. This becomes 0.35 A. But you also have a W2, which is 1.05 W naught minus 0.25 A, right? So could be those two cases there as, uh, as, I, as I mentioned there. So it's gonna be uh, those two potential cases that we have, whether it's a bullish or a bearish market. Now, since the investor, right? Since the investor's utility function, okay, since, the investor's utility function is equal to uw is equal to negative 0 0.5 over w squared. Essentially, we can plug in the value of w1 uh, and 2 to that w that we have there, right? So this is going to correspond to some value of uh, utility, right? So utility. So we get a u w1 which is equal to negative 0 0.5 over 1.05 w naught plus 0 0.35 a squared you also have a u with respect to w2 which is negative 0 0.5 over 
1.05 w naught minus 0 0.25 a squared. Okay, so those are your two uh, utilities there. And because you now have utility uh, for a bull, so this is your bullish case, this is your bearish case, you can now get an expected utility. And the expected utility is just the probabilities times these utilities. So your expected utility of wealth, of final wealth, is just equal to 0.5 times negative 0.5 over 1.05 w naught plus 0.35a squared plus 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.5 over 1.05 w naught plus 0 0.35, uh, sorry, minus rather 0 0.25 a squared, right? And uh, this is just equal to, right? If you just simplify it, both of them have 0 0.5, so you can factor it out. That's gonna be 0 0.5, okay? negative 0 0.5 over 1.05 w naught plus 0 0.35 a squared plus negative 0 0.5 1.05 w naught minus 0 0.25 a squared okay, so you have that now based on the condition that we've had earlier right the f uh in the, at least discussing the previous video the foc Okay, the FOC for the investor's problem, problem of uh, uh, maximizing the expected utility, right, of final wealth, yeah, based on the theorems of Arrow, is just that the, uh, the derivative, right, of this, with respect to the proportion allocated to the risky assets, which is A, should equal to zero. It should equal to zero. So if we do that, okay, if we do that, uh, sort of, if we do that sort of uh, equation and that derivative, W, if we take the derivative of this entire form with respect to alpha, uh, with respect to A rather, so you're just gonna be left with um, zero, uh, 0 0.5, so just bear with the solution and then check for yourself 0 0.35 over 1.05 w naught plus 0 0.35 a cube plus minus 0 0.5 negative 2 minus 0 0.25 over 1.05 w naught minus 0 0.525 a cube then you just isolate out the proportion because you need to solve for um, alpha over W naught. So to solve, okay. So if you try and isolate this, you'll come up with uh, A hat. Okay, this is not alpha, sorry. A hat over W naught. And that's going to be equal to 0 0.1979. Okay, and uh, you're, you're going to be able to get this when you get the derivative of this and set it equal to zero. So the investor should invest. So based on this, the investor, the investor should invest, invest 19.79% of his wealth in the risky asset, okay? In the risky asset. So that's gonna be the answer for uh, that problem, right? How much would, he or she and in, he invests in the risky asset, it's 19.79% of his final wealth. If the question asks how much should he invest in the risk-free asset, it, well, it's just one minus 19.79%, which is 80.21%. So that's our problem on uh, you know solving this expected utility investment decision using expected utility. And uh, in the next video, we're gonna discuss um, more on these theorems of a Kenneth, Kenneth Arrow on finance. And we're going to delve deeper in this story of um, investment decisions using expected utility, eventually leading up to how we decide upon which securities we should select. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.